What do you call a fly that can't fly? It's called a walk, isn't it? But what about real flies that can't fly? Commonly known as the fruit fly or vinegar fly, flies from the Drosophila genus have been famously used to study genetics due to their ease of culturing and rapid life cycles, some of which have been bred to be unable to fly. One species in particular has been used again and again by scientists and hobbyists. Drosophila melanogaster. This fly is seen as a common pest in households, laying eggs in already rotting vegetables and fruit and other old food that's left out. Drosophila melanogaster is often confused with other more pesky flies that share the same common name of fruit fly. In Australia, there is a different species of fly called the Mediterranean fruit fly. This fly is a serious pest and will damage fresh produce. However, Drosophila melanogaster doesn't do this. While the wild type flies have the full ability to fly, scientists have been selectively breeding these flies for over a hundred years. From labs, we now have flies with vestigial wings that make it so that the flies cannot fly anymore. They can, however, still climb and hop a small distance. This makes it very easy to handle these flies. Another thing about fruit flies is that they're about the size of pinhead crickets, making them a constant and rapidly breeding source of food for those that require tiny food. Drosophila melanogaster has a complete life cycle of 21 days and you can get around a thousand flies from a single culture cup. They can be used to feed very tiny mantises, fish, spider slings, tiny froglets, and really anything else that's small and predatory that would like an insect as a snack. So that all sounds awesome and cool. How do we culture them? When you buy a culture off a hobbyist or a hobby related store, it's quite likely that you'll get something like this, a cup with a vented lid of some sort with some media and some flies or larvae already doing their thing inside it. And to start with, that's all you really need. Those flies and larvae will take care of themselves. The media in the bottom will supply all the food that's needed to sustain the colony for at least one full life cycle of the flies. But when new flies are hatching, it means that the life cycle of the culture might be nearly at its end. And you will need to use some of those emerging adult flies to make new cultures so that you don't have to buy another one when the old culture dies out. On the flip side, if you have to order flies direct from a lab, like I had to, you will have to set up a proper culture immediately. Most of the time, lab flies are sent in vials and tubes that aren't intended for the flies to stay in long term. So, let's start a new fruit fly culture. First, we need a plastic cup or a mason jar with a tightly fitting lid. It could be something as tall as, say, a beer cup or more. Anything shallow, and it makes it easier for the flies to simply climb out if you open the container. If you choose to use a mason jar, make sure to replace the metal top with a fine mesh or fabric to allow ventilation without allowing the flies to escape through any gaps. If you choose to use a plastic cup, poke small holes into the lid. These flies can squeeze through most small holes, so something like this particular pushpin won't work. The holes are just too big. This small safety pin, however, is half the size of the push pin, so I use this one instead. The flies can't get past these tiny holes. Next, we need to prepare the bottom media. This is where the fly larvae will eat, live, and grow. You can choose to buy a pre-made mix from a hobbyist store or a lab, and it can save you a lot of time, or you can choose to make your own recipe that can be made from common supermarket ingredients. Not all culture mediums are the same and will yield you slightly different amounts of flies or can alter the lifespan of the entire culture. It's really up to you what you want to use or do. Here's the recipe that I use, but feel free to use your own personalized version of this recipe. I make it in large batches, dry and store it away. Then whenever I need to start a new culture, I just use a little bit. For a large batch, I will need four cups of oats, one cup of brewer's yeast, of the inactive variety, four teaspoons of cinnamon. I mix it all well and store it in an airtight container in a cool, dry place. 
but let's continue with actually starting the culture. From this mix, I take about one tablespoon or three teaspoons and put it into a bowl with just enough water to cover the mix. In the microwave it goes, in my case, for 30 seconds, as it's a high power microwave. Once done, give it a good mix and you want it to have the consistency of mashed potatoes. If it seems a bit dry or, or sticks together a bit much, add a bit more water and mix it until it feels just right. A little bit of water will go a long way, and you don't want it to get too runny. Boon the media into the bottom of the cup and smooth it evenly so that the entire bottom of the cup is covered in a layer of media. Let the media cool to near room temperature and don't forget to leave the lid on while you do this. Otherwise, pesky wildflies might come in and contaminate your mixture while you're not looking. Once cooled, splash a teaspoon of white vinegar on top. Then, get some active baker's yeast, not the inactive brewer's yeast, and sprinkle a bit on top. Now we need something for the flies to cling on to. It can be shredded paper or coffee filters, but the best to work with is wood wool or excelsior. Anything else might sag over time and can block the bottom, but the wood wool holds up far better than the rest. Now it's finally time to add in some adult flies. Add flies in from a culture that's still at its peak and producing a lot of flies. Cultures that are old and only have a few flies left likely have really old flies that will breed less and die sooner. This culture here is still in its prime and you can see that there's a lot of fresh and active flies. So we will take some flies from this culture to start the new one. To harvest them, first we must tap the active culture on the table thoroughly. This makes all the flies fall to the bottom of the cup. Remove the lid and keep tapping if the flies start to climb up. Move the active culture over to your new one and tap in some flies. Give it a few hearty taps. As flies keep climbing upwards, tap both cultures on the table to keep the flies at the bottom. And then quickly put lids on both of them. There we go, a successful fly transfer. There might be some escapees here if you're not careful, but generally they will perish if they can't find food soon and they can't really fly to find anything. You can leave them be or use a brush to scoop them up and put them somewhere, like in this better's mouth. Using the techniques shown here, you can move and transfer flies into enclosures to feed your animals. If your flies are too active or being a hassle, refrigerate the flies for about two minutes to slow them down or knock them out before handling. Now that the culture is fully prepared with flies and all, it's a good idea to mark down the date of when you started the culture. This is helpful for keeping track of multiple cultures and when to expect them to produce more flies. Store the flies somewhere cool and out of direct sunlight. Avoid temperatures that are freezing or above 28 degrees Celsius. High temperatures can harm the flies and larvae, and in some rare occurrences, revert future generations from these flies back to their winged flying forms. Over the course of about two weeks, you will notice changes in your culture. During the first week, adults lay hundreds of eggs that are invisible to the naked eye. In a few days, tiny larvae will hatch out and live in the media at the bottom. They will eat and grow rapidly. By the end of the week, you will be able to see larvae of different sizes in the media, and some of them will be starting to venture out and onto the sides of the cup. By this point, the old adult flies will most likely have passed away from old age. But new flies are on the way. Larger larvae climb up the sides of the container and become pupa. They kind of look like mini brown rice, the kind that you don't want to eat. For a few days, these pupa will become darker until a fully formed adult fly has emerged. When this starts to happen, it's time to start a new culture and continue the cycle again. This colony will continue to produce flies for about a week longer until it dies out. Keep in mind that, like most invertebrates, the lifespan and life cycle is shorter and faster if the temperature is warmer, and slower and longer if the temperature is cooler. After keeping the culture for an entire month, you've used the flies to feed your animals and start other new cultures, and what's left is a very depleted and dead colony. When a culture is old, 
It starts to smell a bit more than it used to, which is often a bad smell. It's time to decide what to do with it. You can either throw it away or clean it out and reuse the container. I always find it worthwhile to tough out the gross smells and properly clean out the container to reuse. Keeping live cultures like this can use a lot of plastic and I want to limit plastic to landfill. If one of my cups break, it's still worthwhile to clean it and recycle it. These are recyclable PET. If you use glass jars, they may be tougher and last longer. You can also choose to get compostable containers or biodegradable containers, which you can put into green waste bins without having to scoop out the contents, as the contents are fully compostable and biodegradable as well. With the important basics out of the way, you might be wondering how these flies can feed so many animals if they're only producing flies every two weeks. It's simple and it requires a calendar. Here's a basic calendar and let's say the year just started. And last year you got a freshly started culture for Christmas. Lucky you! Brand new adult flies will be emerging on New Year's Day. With your first culture in production, it's time to make sure that this is not your last culture. Start a new culture now, and then, in a few days time, your flies are likely to still be in production. Start another culture then too. In about two weeks, you will have one culture producing new flies around Tuesday and another around Friday. On Tuesday, start a new culture with those new flies, and on Friday, do the same thing and start a new culture with those flies. That's great. If you keep doing this, you will have one week of flies and one week without flies. But remember that your cultures will produce flies for a few days at its peak. On the following week, on Tuesday, you will still likely have some flies from the culture that just started producing last Friday. Take a chance to make another culture. This culture will produce flies for those in-between weeks that were an issue before. In another couple weeks, the in-between culture will start making flies, and you can use those flies to make another culture on the Friday that would normally have no flies. And there you have it. If you keep starting up new cultures like this, after one month, you will have multiple cultures running, enough to have flies available to your animals 365 days a year. All you need to do is to maintain cultures and make sure that you start new cultures every time they start to produce at their peak. If you have a massive load of animals that need fruit flies, you might decide to run more cultures than on this particular calendar. You might even want to start a culture every single day. That's up for you to decide. This is very flexible and the cultures don't take very long to start at all. There's a link in the description of this video with a written care guide along with a bunch of diagrams and a calendar of what I've just shown you here. I hope this helps you no matter what kind of hobbyist you are, whether you are an avid breeder or an admirer of animals. Feel free to take and make your own methods from this guide. I will see you all next time.